So we're at what's uh, we, we would say is the first diagonalization step. We've got a function where we we had this first control input was a fixed number. We now put a new kind of gadget into it, namely a function, or just really the kind of a label that denotes a function, really. Um, and then that allows us to do this trick in a way that's going to generalize quite a bit of um, the when the when the input changes, you actually change the level of the function. And that gives you something that grows incredibly fast because every time you ratchet up the input, you're in a totally different order of growth in terms of the function you have. So why is it called diagonalization? It's because of this kind of picture. Um, and that is if we just draw a grid of, if we say each row is all the outputs of the F0 function, Remember, that's really basic. That's just successor. This is really just one, two, three, four, five, just the successors of these numbers. And then this would be one, two, four, six, eight. This is the doubles, but I just wanted to show you the, the um, format. And then here we've got tab, we're going to tabulate all the f of two functions. Those are getting just barely exponential. These are the titration level functions, the f3 functions. I'm going to tabulate those guys. f4, that was the last one we really did explicitly. That's that repeated titration gadget, which got pretty impressive. And then F5 gets even more impressive, F6, F7, up to whatever Fn you want. And then what we're doing is we the F of omega function, or F omega naught function, takes the diagonals. And because that goes at every stage, it goes from one row to the next, it is going to be faster growing than any of the individual functions. Because no matter how big a fixed uh, number I put in here, right? if I say, oh, I'll outpace it with the f of 100 function. Well, no, because f of omega naught, that fixed symbol on the variable number, that goes way beyond what the f of 1,000 function, f of 100 function is going to do. Because I say, OK, I'm going to use 1,000 as an input in a far, far faster growth. So it's a single function, as I pointed out at the end of last time, that outpaces all of the previous ones in a very clever way. Um, what One thing that this idea of diagonalization um, is very related to, it's not exactly the same, um, but we've got this kind of grid of, of uh, numbers, grid of things that kind of depend on two variables, and we're using a diagonal sequence to get something that qualitatively just cannot have appeared before in in this diagram in, in particular this the, the function that you're defining by the diagonals cannot match any function that is on the rows it's going to outclass all of them and so this is related to um, Cantor's diagonalization argument which was the first one coming from set theory so if you've ever seen that so um, I think it's this is a good one to sit with a little a minute and really and really kind of say wow this is this is cool this is a new thing this isn't just recursion and, and iteration and it really does create a much faster growing function but they are all actual values of the f's with inputs and control numbers that aren't staggeringly huge and so you could try to kind of convince yourself like eh big deal so what well I think it might be a mistake but we're going to keep going and we're going to use that combined with successor and iteration to just make something amazing. Okay, so now we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to combine these constructors. So we're going to create a new gadget and we're going to call it the successor of omega naught. That's a little bit weird because this was a function. And what does it mean to take a function and add one to it? We're just going to make it a formal definition. We're just going to say, um, and this is this one way to think about it, is just think, take that function, that is a function in the ordinary sense of the word function, a function for integers or standards, and then just say, we, we permit ourselves, whenever we have a function, to just put like a prime on it or something, just put a successor marker. We will denote that as adding one, because it actually does have a lot of the formal properties of adding one. This is, again, very closely related to ordinal arithmetic on infinite ordinals, but you really don't have to know that. That's the cool thing is just take a function and then just put a little mark on it saying, hey, when we put this in the one place we uh, want to put it, which is that first, that sort of control slot of our f functions, we're going to know what to do with it. And we don't even, 
we don't have a need to have a new definition. We already know what to do with, with a successor in the first line. Okay, so we're gonna have this formal gadget, omega naught plus one, the successor of omega. Don't worry about having any kind of definition, but just it's an omega naught with a successor marker. That's really enough. And what is it gonna do? Well, if we just follow the definitions we had, f of omega, omega naught plus one, comma n, should be just repeat f of omega naught with an open slot n times with initial input n. Let's see what happens. This is going to be already pretty darn cool. So, for example, f of omega naught plus one on one. Now, this is going to degenerate. Um, we're taking the f of omega naught something function. We're only iterating it once, so we're just doing it on one, which is almost the smallest input possible. So, this is f of omega naught one. And this is not where diagonalization was doing much for us. It's just f of one, one, which is just two. Yay, it degenerates. Okay. That's not super ex exciting. But sometimes it's good to just make sure it degenerates in the way we think it should. Okay. This is not going to be too bad, though, right at the two stage. F of omega naught plus one comma two, we take a omega naught um, of something and we iterate it twice on two. So here's the deal. We F take, for, well, let's go from inside out. We take a F omega naught two, which in itself is not that huge. That's F of two, two. That's just, that's just eight. Um, but then we take that number and we put it in this slot. So already we're doing the eighth F function and we're putting an 8 into it. I admit those aren't huge numbers, but remember, the F8 function is significantly further than we did in our kind of explicit listing of the F functions. That's well beyond F of 4, and we just barely got a, even the vaguest idea of how big that was. This is going to be um, at a, um, what is a 7 Knuth up arrows level, or is it 8? A, lot, a significant number of Knuth up arrows, if you like that kind of notation. And from our point of view, what does that do? F8 of 8, by definition, it F iterates F of 7 8 times on 8. Okay, so a bit, what big deal, right? But wait a minute, F7 of anything iterates F of 6, and that's going to iterate many times. And then how many times is F5 going to be iterated to define, to do each F6? It's going to be really big, okay? And all that happened here was we put in a measly 2 in it, and we use the fact that um, the output of a of the first f function went into not only the input slot of the second f function but also the control slot okay you might not be blown away yeah that, that's fair enough we've only gotten to f88 okay but let's see what happens when you just put a three in here okay so f omega naught plus one comma three we're going to iterate the f of omega naught level function three times on three so this is just writing out that iteration. Since it's only three times, it's not hard to write out. Um, and so the first one, you get the, the first little diagonalization, doesn't get you that much. F of 3, 3, if you want the explicit number, this is one of the few places where we can still say, oh, yeah, that's a not an incredibly huge number. 2 to the 2 to the something, you know, not ridiculous, like smaller than the number of quantum states in the observable universe or something like that. So not totally crazy. But then we take that number and we put it in to an f omega naught, which means we're putting that number into the control argument and the input argument. Okay, now this, as a control argument for an f function, suddenly this doesn't seem so pedestrian anymore because, remember, we only got up to like f of 4 or something, and this is a lot further down that grid that I showed you at the start of this video. So that's the control argument. And of course, we're putting in the same big number into the input argument. But the really important thing is that it gets passed into the control argument. And then we do it again. So we take f of that. So this is f using a f-generated control argument on an f-generated input. We take that, we take the output, and then we duplicate that not only as the input for the last f, but also the control argument for the last f. We are going way, way down that grid into the regions, into the rows that grow really fast. And we're also going pretty far over in the grid as well. So this is the first taste of the real power of this fast-growing hierarchy, for real. Um, it's going to get a lot bigger from here, but this this has really combined the the, the crucial uh, dynamics. We we started out with low intensity recursion combined with iteration. Then we put in a little diagonalization. 
that definitely gave us a, a, a big a jump. But here is where we can really leverage that diagonalization by combining it with just a tiny bit of successor, which activates uh, the recursive iteration. So recursion, iteration, and diagonalization. Um, if you've watched my other videos, I said that a lot there too, but this is supposed to be self-contained. So in other words, each unevaluated omega naught is a receptacle for this recursive, this is a diagonalization recursion idea that every time you've got, this is kind of lurking in wait here as that outer one. And it's just waiting for these guys to be done evaluating and producing their own big number. And then it gets detonated. I think of it as like a bomb lying in wait that this F omega naught, this just formal symbol is just sitting there. And you don't know necessarily until like you look at this thing, it's a little hard to say, well, at, how big is that going to be? How powerfully is this going to activate? Well, it depends on exactly what the answer to this is. Well, that depends on how powerfully this activates. That depends on the answer to this. And so going from inside out, you have this is decently big. Then that activates this first explosion, which create, lets this get big. Then that, that activates this explosion. That lets the last F evaluation access a level of the, of the finite F hierarchy that is pretty phenomenal. Okay. Um, and that's really, that's something that we couldn't have have done with just f of omega naught. Uh, so notice a pattern here. Well, let, let me show you one more. Maybe the pattern will be a little bit more obvious. Um, then maybe I'll make this a little shorter video. So f of omega naught plus one of four, it's gonna be pretty rare that I go to four because it, it gets too crazy after a while. So this is do the f of omega naught something function four times on four. Um, and I just gonna, I'm just gonna write it out. Notice what we get is we have this like f of four, four, put in twice into an F, and then that put in twice into the next level of F, and then that all put in twice into the last level of F. So it's kind of a binary tree. If you want to picture a bunch of fours, kind of four turns into four, four, turns into four, 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 turns into four, four, four. So we get this binary expansion of F of something comma something, the same thing in both slots. Um, and the increase you know, is in both arguments. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four levels of Fs, but it's not just F of F of F of. It's, 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 it's cooler than that because since F has two arguments, it's very powerful that both of those arguments are expanding out in this kind of binary tree fashion. Um, so that's pretty darn powerful, and we've only done one successor on omega naught. Okay, so... Um, Oh, yeah, so connecting to other kind of big number, fan, uh, familiar big number stuff, it's quite likely you've heard of Graham's number if you're watching, devoting uh, almost an hour so far to watching big number videos. Um, Graham's number is a famous big number that uh, it's actually a simplification of a big number that got used in a very cool mathematical proof uh, back a few decades ago. And um, it, it's famously big. But we're already past that. Is if we just take this function, f of omega naught plus one, you plug in a not an incredibly large number, 64, into that, um, we're already uh, well past g. And if you want to get past g right now, way past g right now, just put in a million into here. But we're almost never going to do that because if we the effort to do that is better spent increasing the control argument. And I'll let you guess what the next function is called. Um, it's pretty easy to guess, and we'll but we'll save it for the next video.